Field effects come in many shapes and sizes, with some being elite and others, well, never seeing the light of day. These can vary from weathers to terrains to screens and more. They affect the field rather than just one Pokemon. It can apply to one side or both depending on the condition. While some of these effects see regular use like Trick Room, Aurora Veil, and all the weather and terrains, others lack any real competitive use. Today we are going to improve these other unused field conditions, whether through small mechanical tweaks, but mostly creating new abilities that summon them. The goal is to give these conditions a better showing than what they have now, as a lot of these are as forgettable as this guy. I already mentioned Trick Room and how it sees regular usage. As a field condition that essentially makes slower Pokemon fast and vice versa, it makes sense why this works. You can take advantage of bulky strong attackers that usually struggle with their low speed by making them fast while still investing fully in attack and bulk. It is a strong archetype even with having to be manually set every time. The same cannot be said about the other room moves. We have Magic Room, a move that suppresses the effect of all items held by the Pokemon on the field, and the move Wonder Room, which swaps the defense and special defense of all Pokemon on the field. While these effects do have potential, they don't really have any place in competitive as moves. Dedicating a move slot to a gimmick at best will not lead to much success. But could these effects work passively as entry abilities? It made the terrains a vital part of competitive, so we might have something here. As strange psychic type moves, I feel it would be most fitting to employ these to psychic type Pokemon. Ones that could use a bit of an ability buff, and also Pokemon already able to use these moves. For Magic Room, I came up with a few potential candidates, but two of them stood out to me thematically. These are Delphox and Hoopa. Delphox would be very fitting to have this ability, let's call it Magic Surge, added to its arsenal. It carries a wand and has many characteristics akin to a magical witch. With its psychic powers, Magic Room would activate upon switching, immediately disabling the effects of virtually all held items for 5 turns. Hoopa, Confined, is another fitting Pokemon to receive Magic Surge. These Pokemon both have Magician as abilities, and with Hoopa's space warping shenanigans and being a mischievous troublemaker, disabling held items seems to be right up its alley, and a useful ability could help it get out of the lowest of tiers. These abilities can be added or replaced Magician to fit the starter and Mythical's ability themes of having only one and two respectively. So how would this ability do competitively for a team? Well, being able to disable held items for 5 turns can have plenty of offensive and defensive utility. Offensively, disabling items means you don't have to worry about a rogue choice guard for a sweep, and based on speed tiers, you'll usually know if you're faster or not. You can hit past Assault Vest and Eviolite boosts as those will be disabled. Held Berries won't activate to reduce super effective damage, boost stats, or restore health. And you can even bypass held items like Focus Sash, Heavy Duty Boots, Rocky Helmet, and Air Balloons that could stump you offensively in certain situations. Defensively, you will be able to deactivate boosting items like Choice Ban, Specs, and Life Orb to name a few. This could help you tank attacks better. Obviously this works both ways as your held item would also be disabled, so no leftovers, choice items, boots, yada yada. But with the team building preparation, you can make sure not having held items is less of a deterrent on your end than your opponents. There is also the possibility of completely new sets, like a setup move on a choice attacker to grab a boost before getting locked into another move, or being able to trick certain items like Assault Vest and Status Orbs without feeling the effects of them yourself. Pretty much having the ability Klutz until the Magic Surge wears off. These Pokemon would not be dead weight on your team either, as Delphox is pretty fast and hits hard with its stab. Hoopa does have its issues, but if forced onto a team, it still has an amazing special attack and good special bulk to set up its ability a few times before going down. And then we have Wonder Room. Swapping the defense and special defense stats can be a super interesting element to introduce as a passive switch in ability. The two Pokemon I want to give this ability to are Musharna and Behem, two very under the radar psychic types that don't have too much going for them to stand out and could definitely use a buff. So what will we call this Wonder Room ability that kind of swaps your guards? Like how about Wonder 
guards. That sounds pretty cool. Bruh. Oh, oh yeah. Well, maybe we'll just stick to our theme and go with Wonder Surge. It will replace Four Warren on Masharna and Telepathy on Behem. Swapping defensive stats can really make matchups complicated, and I feel like it may be a great way to break through squads, even those pesky stall teams. Being able to hit Blissey with special moves for massive damage would be huge for one. Threatening heavier damage on physically defensive Pokemon like Lyscore, who love to tank hits and recover all day, would be satisfying if you don't have any strong special attackers that can deal with it. It definitely gives you more options, as running out of physical attackers and getting walled by especially bulky mon like Florges sucks. Unfortunately, this is mainly good for Pokemon with large discrepancies between defensive stats, and stat boosts will stay on their respective stats, so it won't let you straight up ignore a Registeel or Zamazenta who has set up iron defenses, as even though the defensive stats will be swapped, the boost remaining on the original stat will make the difference in damage output minimal. These two mons themselves aren't that great, but this could give them a purpose to be used. Especially Misharna, as it has really solid bulk all around and decent offensive capabilities, with good healing and support options to not just be dead weight if included on a team. Behem would be the lower tier user that could use this offensively with its really strong 125 base special attack to be a threat to specially bulky mons upon entry and physically bulky mons when Wonder Surge runs out. The next field effect I want to cover is Gravity. Gravity is a pretty cool condition which causes a few pretty powerful mechanical changes. The first one is granting an accuracy boost of about 1.67 times to all moves besides Oko moves that work on a different formula. So every move that has at least 60% accuracy will be boosted to 100% accurate or higher. Your Focus Blast, Hypnosis, Stone Edge, Toxic, all guaranteed to land, excluding any other abilities in accuracy or evasion changes. Even moves under 60% accuracy like Dark Void will still be greatly boosted with 50% turning into 83% and a move like Sing and Grass Whistle trading their 55% accuracy to a 92% chance to hit. It also has a property of causing every Pokemon on the field to become grounded. This makes flying types, levitate users, or Pokemon that are airborne through other means like Air Balloon, Magnet Rise, or Telekinesis, lose their immunity to ground type moves. So we do have a way to grab a super effective ground attack against Air Balloon Rotom Fan. Nice. It also causes them to be affected by hazards like spikes and sticky webs, while also touching terrains and being influenced by their effects. There are some certain moves that interact with gravity that will fail. These are pretty much any move where the user ascends into the air, and hilariously that includes Splash. Other than this, it only boosts one move which is Flapple's signature move, Grab Apple. A small mechanical change we're going to include is increasing the power of slamming moves by 1.3 times under gravity. So Heavy Slam, Body Slam, Slam, and a couple more that would fit will see a pretty decent power increase. This is another one we are going to give to a pair of Pokemon as an ability, as I think the effects are already pretty powerful. This is a really strong ability to have, so we have to be careful who we give it to. The obvious first one is Orbeetle. It previously had a signature G-Bax move that would set gravity. It is a perfect candidate for the new ability named Gravitational Pull, and can replace Frisk. Thanks Blue Cobalt for the name suggestion. The second new receiver of this ability is going to go to Dusk Noir, who can just add it to his arsenal of regular abilities. Dusk Noir is a disappointing Pokemon to say the least, being outclassed by its pre-evolution Dusclops competitively. It doesn't really have much to set itself apart, and this new ability would give it a reason to be used. These Pokemon could definitely see use on ground spam teams, as gravity being set would allow strong Earthquake users to have no immunities outside of Earth Eater, and Wonder Guard. Full hazard stacking could be pretty deadly too, while teams could start using lower accuracy moves that are usually deemed too unreliable. You can fearlessly click your Focus Blast, Blizzard, and Stone Edge, while even semi-reliably being able to run 50% accurate moves like Zap Cannon, Inferno, and Dynamic Punch. This is good for Orbeetle and Dustmoor themselves, both having access to the now 100% accurate Hypnosis and Dustmore being able to reliably land Will-O-Wisp, Poltergeist, Toxic, and having a solid dynamic punch accuracy. 
I don't think this team style would be too overpowered, considering your opponent also gains these perks. Ground spam hazard stack teams can somewhat be countered by grassy terrain and having good hazard removal. It would be great to see these lower tier mons get some love and be used on low accuracy move spam teams. Mist is a next field effect and definitely is a lackluster one. You'll probably remember Wingle using it in wild battles and not really knowing what it did since you only clicked attacking moves. Mist prevents your party from having their stats lowered from other Pokemon for 5 turns. It's not a terrible effect, but using a move and move slot for this move has never been a wise choice competitively. But what if we could have this field effect active passively? I actually believe it would be better than most would think. In competitive doubles, Intimidate spam is very common to neuter physical attackers. Alongside Intimidate, a few common support tools used to lower your stats are Icy Wind and Snarl. Some Pokemon run the item Clear Amulet just to counteract these types of moves. But with the two new abilities I have, the effects of Mist will activate passively, protecting your team from those pesky stat drops. The first ability is Infrigidate, and we'll go to a couple lines that don't see competitive usage. This will be the Glalie and Altaria lines. Replacing Ice Body on Glalie, and being added as a second ability on Altaria. Mist will be summoned upon entry and last for 5 turns, unless holding the new item Misty Rock, which can extend the mist to 8 turns. The cool thing about the ability being on these Pokemon would be their ability to Mega Evolve, which hopefully will be coming back. As a field effect, Altaria and Glalie could set mist to protect themselves and their parties from stat drops and then Mega Evolve to take advantage of their powerful offensive abilities. The second ability is going to be the signature ability of Colossal, and we're going to call it Miss Spit. Spit on that thing. It activates when Colossal is hit by an attack and will start the effects of Mist. This is similar to Sandaconda's Sand Spit. It can replace Flash Fire as a hidden ability, as I feel this is the least used one in Colossal's arsenal. I originally wanted to make it similar to Steam Engine, requiring a fire or water type move to activate. I even thought to throw in ice type moves to the mix but the payoff didn't seem great or reliable enough to just summon the mist effect, so any attack is a lot more viable here, even though thematically it doesn't make as much sense. These would be decent abilities in singles, but I feel it would definitely shine more in doubles. Just being able to block Intimidate Span for your teammates for 5-8 to eight turns is a gigantic addition, along with not suffering stab drops from attacking and status moves. No speed drops, defense drops, or offensive debuffs, you can free up your item slot instead of using clear amulet, and physical attackers would be at ease against Daddy Incineroar. Before I get to the next condition, just remember to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this type of Pokemon content. I have a playlist with more discussion videos and a Discord channel where you can help me fury craft these videos together. We also just ran a monotype random battle tournament from the server for our monthly tournament. So if you'd like to be a part of that, then make sure to also join the Budzone Discord. I'll give a proper shout out to the winners in the next video because I'm recording this before it happened, but we do this every month and the more competitors we have the better, so follow the link in the description or the pinned comment to join the action. Now I want to talk about genuinely never seen field conditions in mud sport and water sport. These reduce the power of electric type moves and fire type moves respectively by 67% on both sides of the field. They remain active for 5 turns even if the user switches out. While well, these moves are only really seen on Wild Geodude and uh, like Surskit, having them pop off when a Pokemon is sent out could definitely see a lot of use. Starting with Water Sport, I'm not even going to create a new ability. I'm going to buff an old one. The ability Damp will now provide the effects of Water Sport upon switching, along with its usual effect of preventing self-destructing moves. Damp is an ability that is passed over competitively on every user. With this added effect, Pokemon like Swampert, along with Golduck and Kingdra outside of Rain, could start using it as a supportive ability. It weakens fire more than Rain, and isn't able to be stopped by a different weather. It still gets outclassed by better abilities on the other Damp users, but it is something to consider now. The water type summoning this ability already resists fire, so this just gives them a further resistance but it acts as great team support for Fire Week teammates. I could see some cheeky team strategies with Fire Week mons paired with a damp user to activate a weakness policy pretty much for free. 
You could even use combos like Damp on Sun Teams if you are using Grass type Chlorophyll attackers and want to neutralize the boosted Fire type attacks while keeping your speed boost and access to moves like Solar Beam and Growth. It's not game changing, but definitely an upgrade on what we have now. And for Mud Sport, this will have to be a new ability. I like the suggestion of the name Filthy in my Discord, so let's go with that. We will give this ability to the Mudsdale line obviously, as it produces and tracks a lot of mud. It would really just be a shame to not give it this ability. This can replace own tempo, as I feel it would be better to keep inner focus over it. The other Pokemon I'll give this ability to is Whizcash, who has a diet of consuming mud and sleeps covered in it. It also could really use some sort of buff. This will replace Anticipation, which I'm sure Wishcast won't be too saddened to see go. While these abilities don't help the users themselves, being normally immune to electric type moves, they are solid team support options. You heavily weaken electric type attacks while not needing a lightning rod user active. It also allows those weakness policy strategies while still allowing you to use moves like Thunder Wave and Nuzzle without blocking them with lightning rod. In singles, the ability can be set and can protect swapped in allies against electric type attacks. Your Dragon Dance Gyarados will be able to set up that extra boost and tank a quad effective hit quite easily with the Mud Sport effect up. While Mudsdale will still usually prefer stamina for itself, I think it is a solid ability for Wishcash, which really only benefits from its oblivious ability otherwise, which isn't even always needed. I was going to also include this on Stunfisk as it is pretty fitting, but I want to limit it to 2 Pokemon per ability. Lucky Chan is the next field condition and probably the most niche of them all. This field effect blocks critical hits from occurring to your party for 5 turns. I mean, it's nice not being able to get crit, but using a move slot and move for it? Eh, really? I'm not gonna do that. So what we are gonna do is buff Lucky Chan to last 8 turns upon use. You know, enough time to use it and then maybe set up another Pokemon with enough time to make the crit ignoring trait effective. Oh yeah, let's make this a switching ability as well, because no one is going to use Lucky Chan even with the boosted turns. I like the suggestion from my Discord for the name Sitting Pretty, as your team will be in good condition not being able to get crit. I would leave the summoning ability at 5 turns as it is easy to set up, and in doubles, 5 turns is a pretty long time. This is definitely best and most fitting for the Florgis line in my opinion, with no actual ability in singles, an ability that prevents critical hits would be a great buff for the Florges line already, but it also would give it another supportive ability in doubles that is more practical. Being able to block guaranteed critical hits from moves like Surging Strikes and Wicked Blow is already amazing utility to have. Calm mindsets cannot be beaten by a rogue crit while the ability is active. There are honestly a few other Pokemon I could see getting this ability, limiting it to Pokemon who have access to Lucky Chan of course. These were Blossom, Love Disk, Audino, and the Light Guardians. Some of these have access to great abilities already, but I think a mon like Blossom would benefit using its Quiver Dance plus Strength Sap set. I think I'll actually give it to the Delcaddy line though. While it might seem like a waste, and while it probably would be, it would be a unique trait that isn't normalized. We can put this over Cute Charm or Wonder Skin. I don't really care. It would maybe give it a small niche in lower tiers, set up the Lucky Chan on Switch In, maybe get a Thunder Wave or Wish Off to support the team, then let a teammate set up without fear of being crit for a few turns. Let me know which other mon you think would be fitting to gain the Sitting Pretty ability. On a side note, this ability would be great for Nuzlocks, as crits completely destroy runs and having the peace of mind of being protected from them for a bit would be a sweet taste. We have two more that I want to cover, and next is a Safeguard Field Condition. Safeguard protects the user's party from all status conditions for 5 turns. It provides very similar effects as Misty Terrain, but protects non-grounded Pokemon as well, while not affecting Dragon type attacks. It's not a bad move, as preventing status is a nice tool to have, as seen with Misty Terrain. The problem is the opportunity cost of running it for what payoff it could have. You would often run other means of status blocking like Substitute or a Misty Surge user. You can also pack moves like Heal Bell or Aroma Therapy to just cure status for your team. But with the new ability, Gratitude, Safeguard would activate upon entry, protecting your team from status for 5 turns. This would obviously have competition with Misty Surge, 
Although they would each have their own perks, Gratitude will protect non-grounded Pokemon and only affect the user side of the field, making it strictly better for preventing status. While Misty Surge will affect the whole field, but will also have other effects like having the power of dragon type attacks, activating Misty Seed, and powering up Terrain Pulse and Misty Explosion. So which Pokemon should receive this ability? Well, no way in hell I'm giving it to the Blissey line, even if fitting. I think I'm once again going to go against tradition and give a new ability to a mythical. The one I had in mind is Shaman in its base form. I think this fits thematically as Shaman is already the cleric type of Pokemon and can dissolve toxins in the air and return Runeland into flourishing environments. I also named it based on Shaman being the gratitude Pokemon. Shaman is definitely needing of a buff to stay relevant competitively, and this will be a step above natural cure as preventing status for yourself and your party will give it a unique niche as a support Pokemon that provides support without even being present on the field. Shaman can swap in on predicted status and block it. With the effects lasting 5 turns, you could essentially use Shaman as a status deterrent as long as it's healthy, as your opponent might not want to risk wasting a turn with status knowing you can just block it by switching. We are also going to buff the normal move safeguard to work with light clay so it can be extended to 8 turns. This will also apply to Shaman's Gratitude ability on switching if holding the clay. Additionally, Safeguard will now be able to be broken by moves like Brick Break, Psychic Fangs, and Raging Bull as a counterplay mechanic since it is now treated as a breakable screen. This will make it so Shaman's team isn't completely immune to status conditions with little way around it, and will also buff those moves a little bit. Defog and Infiltrator are other ways to bypass this, so there are ample workarounds. And the last field condition I want to cover in this video is another rare one, and maybe not as useful. It is the Uproar effect. Uproar is a normal type move that locks the user in for 3 turns. While Uproar is in use, active Pokemon cannot fall asleep. I came up with the ability Boombox, that will create the Uproar field effect without the user having to use and lock itself into Uproar. It will prevent any Pokemon from falling asleep as long as the user is active. It will also wake up any currently sleeping Pokemon. This will not affect Soundproof or Punk Rock Pokemon. Users of Boombox will first and foremost be the x line. This goes without saying, since this line is most related to the fabled sound typing. This ability is very fitting, although Scrappy would likely be better still, at least in singles. The other Boombox user will be Noivern, whose ears resemble loudspeakers and could emit those loud noises to keep everyone up at night. With Infiltrator being Noivern's best competitive ability, I could definitely see this being used. So what are the use applications for this? Well, for one, the whole field will be immune to sleep. So in doubles formats, this could see use against Spore Spammers without needing to use other counterplay options, giving you flexibility in team building. It also blocks other sleep options which is nice, and unlike Electric Terrain, can protect your ungrounded Pokemon from sleep. You could also use this ability to prevent or end the effects of rest. Predicting your opponent to want to rest with their setup mon, you could swap in a boombox Pokemon to prevent them from healing. Alternatively, in doubles, you can rest with your own Pokemon and wake them up by swapping in an ally with this ability, bypassing the two turns of being asleep. There are some cool synergy options here for sure, and it would be really interesting to see this field effect passively and not tied to a horrible competitive move. So those are some of the unseen field conditions that needed some tweaking. Do you have any ideas to improve upon them competitively? Are there other Pokemon you think should receive these abilities? Drop a comment as I always love getting viewers input and read every comment. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon discussion content. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this one next. Take it easy buds.